today's sermon is going to be a little bit different than usual. Some of it is going to be sermonizing. And some of it is also going to be a chance for us to share together some breathing and some guided meditation. But I know for some of us, this is a stretch. It's not what you want in church. And I know for others of us, you're like, thank goodness, a chance to breathe and meditate together. And hopefully through all, we will experience what some have come to call the Buddhist breath of life. And so <clears throat> let us begin by breathing together. Let us begin by just taking an in-breath together. Breathe deep and breathe out together. And on the next breath, breathe in the quality with your imagination of hot, heavy, humid claustrophobia. And then breathe out the quality of cool, bright, light spaciousness. So let us breathe in the quality of hot, heavy, humid claustrophobia. And breathe out the quality of cool, bright, light One last time, in, hot, heavy, humid, claustrophobia, out, cool, bright, light, spaciousness. He didn't feel cool or light. His eyes hadn't shut that whole sleepless night. Now he stood in the middle of his midnight living room. The air around him was heavy, humid, claustrophobic. It contained a dark pressing that seemed to weigh down on his already stiff shoulders. The room's overused air contained a dull cutting that entered, gripping his bowels and stomach. He felt it again. He felt, he just didn't have a word for it. He just knew he shouldn't feel this pain anymore. He'd done the work, he'd read the books, he'd talked and talked and talked to the professionals, but he felt it still. It wouldn't be wished or washed away. And so he just tightened himself against what he knew coming next. Very few of us <clears throat> like to feel pain. We stock up our medicine cabinets with creams and ointments, pills and capsules, all to dull quite naturally the discomfort. We try to stop the headache, the heartache, the backache, the stomachache, and the life ache. And yet, Pain still seems so much a part of our lives. The body ages and aches. The heart opens and breaks. The hope rises and shatters. The dream dares and then disappears. Even if we are not in pain at this very moment, Someone else is suffering right beside us. Someone else is suffering far away from us. Author Stephen Cope recalls a conversation he had with a friend at a party. And he writes, let's talk, I said, scooping out two small plates of lasagna. She poured two glasses of wine. Paula was silent for a moment, then spoke. Have I told you that I've been on Prozac for the last year? I asked, how come you never told me? She said she'd been embarrassed, covering it up, minimizing. Slowly, Paula began to reveal another side of herself. Under the surface of her successful corporate career, she felt a sense of desperation. You know, 
I truly don't remember why I'm doing this work, Paula lamented. I don't know if my work life feels empty because I'm depressed or if I'm depressed because it feels empty. It's like I'm lonely for myself. I have this huge need right now to get quiet. My real life is there, right there, you know, but just out of reach. It's buried beneath the mountain of things to do, people to take care of. My worst fear is that I'll die and not have lived fully, not have found myself. She went on. I have to make some decisions, but I'm too confused. I feel trapped, and I can't tell you how guilty and selfish I feel for even thinking any of this. Listen to those words that Paula speaks. Pain, guilt, selfish, trapped, confused, lonely, empty, pain. Does this sound familiar to any of us? What is your pain? What is your empty For many of us, pain signifies that something is wrong. No, for many of us, pain itself is wrong. We think we wouldn't have pain in our bodies if we'd lived healthier, ate better, not had that second piece of cake, exercised regularly, or rested more, or if we were just luckier. We wouldn't have this pain in our spirit if we could just figure out how to make the fractured pieces of our life come together. Our modern airbrush society supports the idea of pain escapism at any cost. If you've got the money, something, somebody has something to dull the edge. We can tune out, close down, and shut off. The escape comes with many names, booze, drugs, food, sex, the internet, our iPod, our credit cards, cars, even over book schedules and calendars. Sometimes I wonder, was Carly Simon looking at my life when she sang, I haven't got time for the pain. I haven't got room for the pain. But, but from the east flows another wind. From the east comes another way. From the east breathes the Buddha's teachings, which proclaim pain as a part of life. For the Buddha, pain is not punishment. Pain is not a mistake. Rather, Buddhism says pain is a natural part of living. Pain is part of our human condition. But pain is more than unwelcome inevitability. In pain itself, the Buddha teaches, are the seeds of hope and transformation. Buddhism teaches that pain is not a problem to be solved, but rather, as strange as this may sound, it's an experience to be explored. Pain is inevitable, but what we do with it is entirely 